All right, we're going to try an optimization problem again here today. This is this is a challenge one. This has a lot going on it, but if we just think about the same ideas with our optimization problem, we can work it through. And what do I mean by the same ideas? We're thinking, what are we trying to optimize? What's an equation for that thing I'm trying to optimize? What's another equation I can work with to get that in one variable? And then I'll take the derivative, find the critical numbers, test endpoints. So let's just keep it to those basics and we can work through this problem. The problem is two towers situated on level ground are 150 feet apart. One tower is 50 feet high, the other is 30 feet high. All right, so starting with the diagram right away, I've got one tower here, which is 50 feet high, and then 150 feet away, I've got tower number two, which is just 30 feet. And the total distance here, 150 feet. Okay, what am I doing with that? A guy wire is to run from the top of each tower. Um, a guy wire is just it's those wires at the top of tall towers that go to the ground, kind of anchor it in place to hold it uh, steady. So that's a guy wire. It's to run from the top of each tower to an anchor point between the two towers. Where should the anchor point be located so that the total length of the guy wire is minimal? Um, so you're going to have this wire going from the top there and from the top there somewhere to anchor them. And we're trying to find the length of that whole guy wire. So all this here in green, that's kind of the length we're trying to find. So what are we trying to optimize? Well, the length of that guy wire. And we're trying to make it a minimum. So we're trying to find the minimum length that that can be. Okay, well, first of all, what's the equation there? Well, the length from tower, let me label it A and tower B. The length from tower A is different from the length of tower B. So I'm going to have to use up two variables here. Let's just say A and B. I've got length A and length B, and I'm trying to make that length the minimum. So I can write over here my primary equation. I'm trying to make a plus B the minimum. So I'm just going to say M is equal to A plus B. That's what I'm trying to optimize. Okay, so I've got those two going on. Well, I need to work with those variables. Is there any other thing? So I'm thinking of the secondary equation, something to make this primary in one variable. Is there any other thing that relates those two variables? This is where a diagram helps us a lot because looking at this, I see a couple right triangles. And if I see right triangles, Mr. Pythagoras is at the front of my mind. The only problem here is if I do the Pythagorean theorem on this, well, I have to do two bit different Pythagorean theorems, one for triangle A and one for triangle B. That's two different equations. Hmm. Well, I'd say let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so secondary, because at least all that's popping out of here for something to relate A and B is this Pythagorean theorem. Um, well, I don't know this bottom length. It's Let's call it X and the one on the right, let's call it Y. So for triangle A, I can say A squared is equal to X squared plus 50 squared. For triangle B, I can say B squared is equal to Y squared plus 30 squared. Okay, so that's good and all. So I can think about taking both of those and replacing them into my primary equation. Uh, but think about this for a second. If I take this and put it in for A, and I take this and put it in for B, my equation is going to be back to two different variables. I'm going to have an X and a Y. That doesn't help me any. Can I work with these secondary equations in any way? to get them to be only using one other variable. That is only using an X or only using a Y. I can, I can, let's look at this. I know the full length here to be 150. So if I say I have X over here, well, instead of a Y, I can label this 
150 minus x. Whatever I use for my length on the left side, I'm going to have the remaining bit of 150 to use on the right side. That technique, when you kind of use the full length and you are splitting it up somehow, this technique of using just one variable to label that is super useful. It gets rid of one variable in your equations. That means I can go back to my b squared equation, and now I can say b squared is equal to 150 minus x squared, oh sorry, 150 minus x, all of it squared, plus 30 squared. All right, this is fantastic because now I can solve these for a and b, which just involves taking the square root. So I can say a is equal to the square root of x squared plus 2,500, which is 50 squared. And b is equal to 150 minus x squared plus 900. Uh, and of course, when I take the square root of both sides, it's plus or minus, but I'm dealing with a positive link, so I, I can forget about the negative. This allows me to take my maximizing, or in this case, minimizing equation, and rewrite it as the square root of x squared plus 2,500 plus, now b, and that would be, so 150 minus x squared plus 900. Okay, so there we go. I got my equation one variable. And notice how this is a little different. I started off with my primary equation being a and b, but I've ended up with it being in x. So I actually introduced a whole third variable, um, but I got in one variable, so that's awesome. Okay, um, I need to simplify this a little bit before I take the derivative. Um, so I'm gonna say this equals the square root of x squared plus 2,500 plus, I've gotta foil this guy, so if I get it foiled, I end up with 22,500 minus 300x plus x squared plus 900. One more time, I'll write this before I take the derivative. I'm going to rearrange terms, get the x squared up front just because it looks more familiar. Add the 2250 and the 900 to get 2340. Okay, I'm ready to take the derivative. And we're taking the derivative to find the critical numbers because that's where a max or min is going to occur. So my m prime is equal to, well, I've just got a bunch of chain rules. And when my outer function is the square root, that means the derivative of that is 1 over 2 times the square root. And it's the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inner times the derivative of the inner function. Okay, plus 1 over. So this looks like a really messy derivative, but it's really not, it's not that bad. Okay, this is basically the exact same chain rule for this one. Times derivative of the inside, which is 2x minus 300. All right, so let's simplify this a little bit before we set it equal to zero. When I go through and simplify, that two is gonna cancel, that two is gonna cancel. This I can factor out a two and have x minus 150. Therefore, the two will cancel there and there. So hopefully you can follow along with that as I rewrite it as this plus x minus 150 over the square root of x squared minus 300x plus 2340, 23,400 I should say. And we're gonna set it equal to zero. Okay, now for this work. So I'm gonna slide over here, we're gonna need more space for all of this. So let's take this, as I set it equal to zero, Okay, two routes you could go. You could combine those fractions um, and then work from there, multiply the left and the right side. Uh, I am going to actually subtract this whole second fraction to the left side so that I end up with a negative x 
minus 150 over our square root. Uh, and this is going to be nice for us because it's going to allow me to cross multiply, which is going to be a nifty way to get things solved for x for us. That, and then on the other side, I still have x divided by x squared plus 2,500. Okay, so we got fancy math. Hopefully we're good at our algebra to do all this. Now notice on this side, I subtract the whole thing. So I'm now going to distribute in that negative, which will give me negative x plus 150. And that is the same as 150 minus x. Let me just change the order of that because, I don't know, it looks better. I don't like having a negative out front, if I can help it. Okay, so I have this, and notice this is just a proportion in a sense, so I can cross multiply, and I end up with 150 minus x times square root of x squared plus 2,500 equals x times our square root of x squared minus 300x plus 23,400. Okay, what should we do here? Well, I see a couple square roots. I don't like square roots, let's square both sides to get rid of those square roots. If I square both sides, remember your properties. This square, because it's over multiplication, distributes to both of them, okay? Because we have multiplication combining these two. So therefore, I'm gonna have 150 minus x squared but I get rid of this square root, which is awesome, equals x squared, and get rid of this square root. Okay, so now we have to go through this and multiply all this. It gets pretty nasty. Um, so I've done some sketch work on the side. So first of all, I foiled our first one. Okay, and we get that, and then I have to multiply it by x squared plus 2,500. That equals... I can distribute in the x squared, at least it's easy on this side. Uh, the, on the left side, it's gonna get pretty big. Okay, so on the left side, I have to distribute those two. It's a lot of multiplying. I end up with, and I guess you have to trust me here, feel free to do all that multiplying by yourself if you care, but just to speed up the process, I did it on the side. Uh, so you don't have to just watch me multiply things in this video. So I distributed and then I have combined like terms here. Uh, and when I say big numbers, I talk, <laughs> I mean big numbers because we get 56 million here on the right. And that equals x to the fourth. Um, luckily, a lot of things do cancel out here. So it's not so bad. Again, we're just trying to solve for x here. So notice if I move everything on one side, because I'm gonna need a factor this, those cancels and those cancel. So I get everything over onto the left side and I end up with x to the fourth minus 300, oh, I'm sorry. I end up with 1,600 x squared minus 750,000 x plus 56 million, 250,000 equals zero. All right, so this guy here, we're gonna have to factor. And, and the first thing I notice is I can factor out a greatest common factor. Now again, we're working with big numbers, so maybe it's not super easy to see that, but it, all those zeros at the end of my terms definitely makes me think that there's something to be factored out. Um, and we can factor out a 400 to at least make it a little bit more manageable. Uh, when I say, like I notice these two zeros, these two zeros, these two zeros, so I notice at least 100 could be factored out. Turned out 400 could be. Now I have to factor this inside quadratic, and we end up with, and this I actually, I plugged it into Wolfram to help me with this factoring because it'd be a nasty one to figure out that the factors, um, what multiply to 140,000 and add to negative 870, 1,000. 875, um, that would be difficult to figure out. 
all right, so I'm here and I've got the 400 out front. Of course, it doesn't matter when I'm solving for x. So I got it factored. I can say 4x minus 375 equals 0. x minus 375 equals 0. And I end up with x equals 93.75. and x equals 375. So two answers, which one is it? Which one gives us the minimum? All right, let me highlight these. Um, well, we haven't thought of our feasible domain yet, because um, which one of those could it be? Well, let's go back to our problem. So x is what we're talking about. Well, the whole length of this is 150. That means as x is bigger than 150, well, that's not possible. So feasible domain, is going to go from 0 feet to 150 feet. Um, so that eliminates our larger choice of x equals 375, leaving us having to check 0 feet, 93.75 feet, and 150. So our two endpoints of 0 and 150, and we are going to take those and plug them into the original function. So we're going to find m of 0, m of 93.75, and then m of 150 feet. Okay, and right, we're going to take those three values and plug them into our original function, which is right up here. Let me highlight that for you. So it's kind of a nasty one to plug into, but... That is what we want to do. So first, let's start with zero, the little bit easier one. Plug that in and get 50 square root of 2,500 in the first one, plus, and here, let me do some calculations, 152.97. So trust me on that. You can use your calculator if you need to. So I got 202.97 feet for zero. Now let's slide down to 150 when I plug in 150, I get 158.1 plus square root of 900, which is 30, and I get 188.1 feet. Okay, what about my critical number in the middle? Well, let's take 93.75 and plug it in. I get 106.25 plus 63.75. Again, I did some calculations on the side. This gives me a nice 170 feet. Okay, well, looking at this, which of these three are minimum? Well, it looks like our minimum of x equals 93.75 when adding together a and b. 93.75 gives me the minimum of 170 feet. Okay, and that occurs if I have the anchor point 93.75 feet away from tower A.